pag pumubisita kasi sa amin, we make it a point na tinuturuan namin yung mga visitors namin about natural farming. Ang survival rate namin to nasa 85 to 90 percent po. Wow! So, nakakatuwa naman yan. Good news nga. So, dalawang maipapayo natin sa ating mga taga-subaybay. Tubig na mainit, lagyan ko nung uh, ng produkto mo, wala yung uh, wala yung kalamansi, walang lemon. Anong lasa? Kasi nagko-conduct pa sila ng seminar sa mga gustong magpasok dun sa mga hatchery ng dito. Ano ba itong biochar na to? Pwede ba natin pag-usapan? Ano po ang biochar? Magandang araw ako po si Amy Buiko at ito ang agree ako dyan. Ngayong araw, pag-uusapan natin ang isang kakaibang farm sa Tagaytay. Relaxation at healthy food ang kanilang ino-offer dito nga sa Meraki Forest Farm. Alamin natin ang lahat ng ito sa aming pagbabalik. Ito po ang agree ako dyan. Nagbabalik po ang agree ako dyan. Ngayong araw ay papakilala ko po sa inyo ay nasa Tagaytay ang kanilang farm at ang kanilang farm nga po ay Meraki Forest Farm. Kasama po natin si Sir Manolo Asoy, ang farm consultant at ang owner po ng Meraki Forest Farm, si Ma'am Barbara Kitana. Hello po! Hello! Should we do this now? <laughs> yes, Ma'am. Uh, Meraki Farm. Yan, pagsimulan natin. Ano ba itong Meraki Farm? Meraki Forest Farm. So, yung with Meraki, it's, uh, ang kwento, do you want the long or the short? Um, uh, sige, doon tayo sa long. <laughs> Para detailed. <laughs> okay, so, um, well, the whole idea kasi is, I was, I really wanted to go local with the name. And mm -hmm. naghahanap ako ng Filipino word that captures passion, love, creativity, and soul. Kasi the idea about living well um, is when your mind, body, spirit, right, are all integrated and all attuned to one another. So, wala ko nakita ng Filipino word, right? So, when I actually Googled it and typed all those four components that I wanted in a name, it was with Meraki that came out. Mm. And exactly with those components, um, and it's a Greek word, which means doing everything with passion, creativity, love, and soul. Oh. Anong language itong Meraki, ma'am? It's a Greek. Greek? Okay. Yeah, yeah, it's a Greek word. Right. So, does that answer your question? Yes, po. And... Ma'am, pwede bang share niyo sa amin? Ano ba yung history nitong Meraki Farm? Paano nagkaroon ng Meraki Farm? Okay, so um, as as other, ano, siguro other businesses during the pandemic have had the opportunity to pivot, right? Uh, into where they can continuously um, either live better, di ba? How, how they can be well whether that's financial or non-financial right so in in my in in my case right uh, we had the branding design and publishing studio which is called ampersand design think lab and we were located in makati right in the heart of publish um when we heard when we know that it was gonna be locked down right so and it didn't make sense for me personally, to be, and even for the team, no, to be located in the city. So I thought it best where I can to relocate um, the family to Tagaytay. Because there, there's a one hectare property there. So that's a blessing that that's been there. But um, it's only been used as an escape, right? Mm -hmm. So starting with, and... So, the thinking was, okay, why would I continue to buy vegetables and fruits 
uh, in the market when you have a piece of property like that, right? Tama ba? So, uh, and, and, and I was always naman, uh, kumbaga, I've always wanted to eat clean. Uh, I know the science behind organic uh, food, right? I've always read out on it. So, I contacted Manolo, who used to help the family back in 2014. Actually, start the initial farming. But since no family member naman stayed there for full time, we needed to debunk the idea. But since now, I was bent on living there, right? I called him and he was, obviously, since anything about organic farm, anything, because that's also his advocacy. Uh, and then later on, you can probably talk to him about his own um, journey into being a scientist uh, of agriculture and specifically organic. So that's when we all started to come together and create the plan and then to further the vision of it being a sample, uh, a, a modest sample. Uh, of course, it's one hectare, so that's not really modest, but how can we replicate uh, eating food from our own garden um, in a 150 square meter space, if that's what we have, or up until 300. So we've been able to devise a farm system where we can show how it is for a household setup, how it is for a commercial setup uh, within that space. So that's how With Meraki was born. And basically we started welcoming um, some families, uh, started with friends and with clients who needed a breath of fresh air, literally, right? Uh, to, to get out of the city. And sometimes, you know, they had their parents or grandparents. Some of them have cancer. Some of them are on wheelchairs. Some of them brought the kids and they were just uh, wonderfully, you know, getting dirty and going around the forest part, uh, the undeveloped part. And that's when they started asking, uh, why don't you grow your vegetables, which is already in plan, even when, um, you know, I had the vision of uh, transferring there. And so that's what we started doing with the help of Manolo and three other farmers. Oh. Um, so we have, they are all TESDA certified farmers. And now maybe I'll give the the floor to Manolo. <laughs> but basically the vision is, um, how do we create a diverse uh, number of crops that can satisfy the Filipino table? accommodate for a Mediterranean diet, accommodate for a keto diet, all types of diet that can benefit one's health uh, requirements. So we've come up with a library of 100 crops that we are earmarking to be able to be ready for harvest by end of year because some crops take longer to grow than others. You know that, right? So, and then we're starting to also invest on greenhouse just so we can be climate risk and pest risk resilient, right? Um, especially now that, you know, we always have the risk of uh, of the Tagaytay, ash fall. So yes. right now, right? So we uh, we went for the best structure that we that our budget can afford right um because then again we have to always show the viability eh, of any farm setup right um because we we want people to have more of these types of setups when they can you know uh probably consider living out of the city Right, because as they say, uh, growing your own vegetables is like 
printing your own money. Yeah. Opo. Ako, napaisip ako, Bob, kung nag-relocate ba kayo dun sa farm, may mga nakatanim na? Pero that time kasi, uh, hindi pinagawa pala yung bahay nila dun, yung residential area nila. Uh, Nakaabutan namin dun yung mga coffee, more of the coffee nila. Kasi, alam coffee, naman natin, cacao. When we say Batangas and Cavite, mm-hmm. uh, coffee and battery. So, they're, they're from their one hectare area. It's more than coffee. Oh. Pero wala coffee. pa yung mga greens. Wala pa, wala pa. Mm-hmm. We just so, introduced it kasi gusto ng family na or sa side from coffee, gusto mo rin ng vegetable. Kaya we add mm-hmm. the, the, the vegetables. That was, that was 2014. Then by 2021, nagpahinga na ako ng six or seven years. And I went back, uh, yun, nag, ano na kami, we really planned na to do the agribusiness na talaga. Through organic farming, regenerative agriculture, and health, of course. We also have a restaurant there. So, medyo marami-rami na siyang pag-inans. Unlike nung 2004. Opo. Bali, sir, balitaan ko eh, ikaw ay pumunta pa ng Japan para mag-aral. So, kailangan kasi ng dancer that time. So, I tried to go, but uh, I went to a <laughs> uh, Ano nung mga natutulan mo sa Japan na inadapt natin or inapply natin dito sa Merak Park? Uh, number one talaga is time management, of course. Yung business uh, component ng farm. And then number three, yung ano talaga, technology. Yan yung mo, ano, most of that. So, sa technology kasi, uh, since magkaiba tayo, tayo ay nasa tropical country. They are ano, diba, sa ano temperate sila. So, pero the technology wise, uh, you can really learn na uh, how to grow crops. No? Timely, yung quality, so of course quantity. No? And then yung mga technological hindus na wala pa sa Pilipinas. Sabi nga nila sa Japan, parang ang Pilipinas daw ay 100 100 years backwards tayo. Oo. Sad to say. Ano so ano so sure pero mo ang ganun na nga. Kaya, we went there, try to to learn, uh, try to learn and adapt what they really do. Kasi, alam mo, Japan, before uh, agriculture talaga, pagdating sa economic uh, activity, agriculture number one. Then, when they introduced yung, ano, yung motors, motoring, yung maganyan. Uh, number two, automotive, ganyan, cars, mm-hmm. heavy equipments, maganyan. Uh, number two pa rin ng agriculture. And pag nasa Japan ka kasi, masarap maging farmer doon. Kasi in a year, you can be a millionaire. Yung kung buhay, buhay ka kaiba, yun ang pagkakaiba sa atin. Na pagdating sa farm doon, well protected sila sa insurance, sa inputs. Of course, government assistance, technology, market, number one yan. Na whatever you produce, surely mabibili sa market. Mm-hmm. Then kung sakaling magkaroon ka ng ano halimbawa yung magkakaroon ng disaster, halimbawa na lugi ka, siguro one or two days makukuha mo ng insurance mo kaagad. Hindi ka nabipila katulad ng sa EDSA. <laughs> Matagal ang pila. So yung maganda yung difference na I, ano, I, I am inspired na the Philippines can be Japan also. Kasi kung titignan mo rin, mas mayaman tayo sa resources. Eh. Number one, water. Pangalawa, yung weather condition. Pangatlo, medyo talo tayo ng konti sa sipag. Mas masipag sila. Kasi ang Japanese, pag Japanese farmer ka, kung anong galing ng Japanese machinery, ganun din yung talo. Mm-hmm. If, if a machine can do in one hour, the, the, the farmer can also do in one hour. Parang ganun siya. So, inaano yan. Kaya, kaya napakasipag nila. Kahit yelo siya, kahit winter, kahit summer. Mm-hmm. Kasi sa kapat na season yan talaga medyo maninibago ka sa farming. Pero they really do a lot of things. They introduce technology. They they build uh, they built a very good market system. Then they have a cooperative. Actually, the best uh, part din ng Japan is yung association. Cooperative. Kapag member ka ng cooperative, you have a lot of access to different inputs. Eh. The market, the technology, machinery. Yan. Ma-access mo lahat yan. Insurance kasama din. Ibig sabihin, hindi kaya sa ating kasi sometimes, uh, I'm just comparing the Philippine and Japanese uh, agriculture. Yeah. Uh-huh. So, yun. Yung mga ganun, uh, we are adding these uh, technologies, the system, 
and to adapt into uh, Miraki's way. No? Uh, at least meron tayong Filipino version ng Japanese agriculture. Ito, ito, this is the one we are, uh, want to get. Want to mm-hmm. give uh, people, want to produce, want to do in a business. Yung Japanese way. Kasi kailangan natin talaga. Alam mo, if, sample, if, if the data is correct, parang 55 million Filipinos daw is really related to agriculture. Directly mm-hmm. in it. So that's really a big manpower, di ba? Napakalaking manpower yan. So, can you imagine bakit nagkakaroon pa ng bagsak sa market, nalulugi, di ba? Of course, yung weather, that's a fortuitous event. It doesn't matter. Pero yung system sana, sa government, insurance, the farmer, the technology, that's what we really want to, ano, to give to the farmers there. Na, uh, I hope we, we, we can do it ourselves. Then we can really share to other people. So, also for the country, kasi, We are 110 million Filipinos, di ba? Hmm. A lot of mouths eating every day. So, kailangan natin iayos yung agriculture sector natin para ma-meet natin yan. Kasi, 110 million, this 2022, how much more the coming decades? Hmm. But I really believe, we in Miraki believe na we can address the, yun yung mga, yung ano na yan, yung problema sa food, the pricing, the market, the production, the technology, the farm. Kasi yun ang gusto namin gawin. We try to eliminate the, uh, ano yung nasa midang na yan. Kasi minsan bibili mo isang bawi, ano, I, I traveled kasi most of the provinces in the Philippines. Pakakita ka dyan na ano, isang bawi sa Nuevo Vizcaya, the, the trader or the meal na, they'll buy uh, the example to map, tomato ng 2 pesos lang. Pagdating mm-hmm. sa Metro Manila, that will cost you 40 times higher. But the one who is gaining really much of the, ano talaga, of the income is the middle man. Ang farmer talaga, kung, kung saan nagsisimula yung food natin, yung food production, yun yung maliit na kinikita. So, yes. Miraki, we try to, ano na, we ayos sa aming system. Na isama natin yung farmer, not just we, in Miraki, the business side to turn, but also the farmer. So, we're trying to eliminate, to cut or treat, to trim. The middleman also. Mm-mm. Yung uh, gusto namin gawin with Miraki. Opo. So right now, ano-ano yung makikita natin sa loob ng Miraki Forest Farm? Okay, once you're in Miraki, with Miraki Forest Farm, you can see, uh, of course, uh, leafy vegetables. We also have some coffee. And then some fruit vegetables. And then also, we have the dining area for, of course, I just you cannot only see it and don't just look at it you have to taste it through our yeah. we have a restaurant also there. Mm. Eh nabanggit mo yung taste ano ba yung mga menu? <laughs> ano menu? ang menu natin? Hey yeah. Amy, uh good restaurant right? Uh, so prior to uh prior to last last year okay when since we started it Uh, when the private diners they come, um, we just make them choose four course, three course, uh, two courses. So the number of courses. Tapos if they want plant based, or they want pasture based, or they want sea based, um, because they really don't know what they're gonna get. Mm. On the harvest. Oh, parang surprise. <laughs> uh, medyo ipagka-surprise siya kasi at that time, um, hindi pa, hindi pa kompleto talaga yung crops. But I didn't, di ba, we don't wanna force, we don't wanna force a menu. Kasi that's, that's sometimes the problem, di ba? When you mm-hmm. have, a, when you've created the menu, So, dapat it should just feel like, di ba, yung lutong bahay na, na uh-huh. pumunta ka, in fact, we don't transact money there. Um, they just pay ahead and then they come. So, parang mm-hmm. pumapasok sila at tumalabas sila ng bahay. So, pag may force menu ka, pag may menu ka kasi, you're forced to actually, uh, what do you call this, deliver that. Deliver that. Hmm. Eh, paano kung wala ka mapitang fresh nun? Paano kung wala nun? So, we now, uh, we're gonna be in a better position to do that. 
we are gonna move away from the course menu because mm-hmm. again uh, it might it might be more expensive for others so we want people to be able to choose the items so our by june uh that's when we're gonna come up with our new menu mm-hmm. uh, which is gonna satisfy uh you know how we must all eat diba so 80% uh plant diba 80% vitamins and minerals that's we always go back to the balanced diet uh mm-hmm. principle so and then your protein you can choose your vegetable protein or your animal protein and then of course your good carbohydrates and fats so uh, yun na lang yung abangan na lang Amy oh uh, sa June <laughs> Pero here in Poblacion, uh, we're launching after Holy Week, uh, last week of April naman. Uh, same idea. So, you can trust that the menu is based based on seasons. Mm-mm. Right? And, of course, trying to eliminate also food waste. Right? So, Uh-oh. all of these are part of our philosophy. So, plant-based, non-plant-based, um, Yon. Uh, I don't know if that answers your question. So I cannot tell you yet what the menus are, but definitely they will satisfy Southeast Asian palates, Filipino palates, Mediterranean, uh, Middle Eastern, right? Oh. International, right? The uh, Quito people who are gluten intolerant will be satisfied. Uh, people who are in the keto diet, people who are vegans. So, those are all part of uh, what we will try to satisfy when we develop the menu. Opo. Nandinig ko may diet, may keto, Mediterranean diet. Pero pa yung nutritionist dito na involved? Uh, yes, yes. Uh, in fact, part of our part of our living well, uh, live better for 30 days program uh, these are all certified coaches, right? Mm-hmm. So, plant-based coaches, plant uh, certified plant-based cooks, right? Oh. So, really, we cannot uh, go at it without the science, mm-hmm. right? So, kasama, kasama yan kung merong mga tao na kailangan mag-count ng kanilang macros. So, that is a nutritionist. And then, when it comes to our products, it's food technologist naman. Mm-mm. Right. Parang pagka gusto mo talaga ng healthy food, eh, dyan ka pupunta. <laughs> Straight from the farm, tama ba ma'am? Straight from the po- farm ang inyong mga uh, gulay. At sabi mo kasi diverse ang farm. Meron kayong mga alagang hayop ba dito? Uh, sa ano kasi sa livestock naman, since we only have one hectare. Uh, we are we are about to plant back. We will be putting it or we will be ano, uh, uh, renting another farm here, you know, which is bigger for livestock. Uh, mm-hmm. We're still building the livestock, but it's also good to see for you know, but in uh, business wise, uh, larger scale, we're planning to rent a farm, bigger area for that. Oh, so parang kiwalay pa sa dun sa Meraki. Yeah, At the very that. least, yung eggs lang yun. Kasi gusto ko magka-eggs. Oo. Management din kasi. Management-wise, pagka livestock, pag nagdagdag ng livestock, mas marami uh, na kailangan na oras para doon kumpara sa mga halaman at iba pang mga bloko. We are also considering the geography. Uh, I mean, the location, the area kasi. Uh, before kasi, nung one and one, the uh, Nakitanic family bought the farm. Ano ba siya? Okay ba? Medyo farm pa ang dating. Pero this time, ang dami na kasi yung residential area. So, Mm-mm. it's not so suitable for that area. For the main time. Okay. Kaya pagka nag-alaga ka ng baboy doon, baka paalisin kayo. <laughs> Kung residential. <laughs> um, um, yung mga ganun, they consider the aned, yung mga uh, pollution. Eh, mm. But they consider na, kasi gusto namin talaga kasi we want to be complete from A to Z. Mm-hmm. The restriction for, uh, regarding the community, yun yung pinag-iisip namin. Yes, sir. Ayan. So, 
Bali, for now, magbe-break muna tayo. Pero magbabalik po tayo at marami pa tayong pag-uusapan tungkol sa Meraki Forest Farm. Ito po ang Agree Ako Diyan. Agree Ako Diyan. Ligo, balik po ang Agree Ako Diyan. Kasama pa rin po natin si Mang Barbara and Sir Manolo ng Meraki Forest Farm. Hello po ulit. Hello. Hello. Good afternoon again. Yes. Ayun, Sir Manolo, may tanong ako sa iyo. Kasi sabi natin biodiversified yung ating farm, no? Kayo ba ay naguhukay dito? Meron kasi akong alam na farm, hindi sila naguhukay kasi ayaw nila sirain yung structure ng kanilang uh, farm. Uh, yun, zero tillage system. Yun yung Zero tillage. Walang, hmm. zero walang, talaga, tillage. walang hukay, walang cultivation. Oo. Oo. Uh, yung yung sa ano yan sa merong isang school sa Japan na ganyan ang ginagawa zero tillage kung tatanim ka lang kumaga nasa surface ka lang hindi ka dapat mm-hmm. pasok sa surface na lang. sa ganung bagay kasi uh, pinipreserve nila yung 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 ano ecosystem na sa loob ng lupa yes. yung nutrients the microorganisms na pa importante niya kaya they, they don't really disturb it parang it it as is lang siya no? naturally mm-hmm. Pero kasi sa part natin na halimbawa sa Pilipinas, if you do palay kasi, uh, kailangan mong galawin din eh. Gagalawin mo rin siya. Kaya lang syempre, hindi yung to the point na... Kasi pag, pag nakikita mo yung farm na napakalinis, walang damo, tapos well cultivated, it's not really healthy. Mm-hmm. Parang ano yun, parang... Parang yung nagpapaayos ka ng mukha, nagpaparito, okay, mga ganun. Yung makikita mo yung ano niya, aesthetic value niya. Maganda. Pero inside of it's not. Kasi yung sa, ano nga, sa nutrition farming, napaka-importante na unang-una dyan, kailangan healthy rin yung soil. Ilang, hindi naman ibig sabihin yung nagtatanim lang healthy. Dapat yung soil din. Number one. Then if you plant something doon sa soil, makaproduce ka ng mas uh, nutrient density. Hmm. Or nutrient dense na products or plants or crops. Ano? Fruits and vegetables. Then at the same time, tayo ng mga human, we can really consume uh, ano, diba? yung nutrient dense na galing doon sa lupa na yun. And then at the same time, we can really protect the environment. So yun, well balanced yan. Kailangan yung ganang. Yung zero tillage, uh, it is a very good option. But there are ano, there are times kasi na we can really, ano, we have to check also the soil. Kung, mm-hmm. kung so okay parang meron soil, siyang area na applicable siya. Yeah, yeah. Not all areas. Kasi kung kulang naman yung soil, uh, ay namang humans, we will be putting organic gano'n dyan, di ba? Organic inputs, may gano'n, humus, anything, para mas maging healthy rin dyan. We, we can help treat, uh, uh, to treat the soil then. It depends on the, it's a case-to-case basis sa, ano, sa farm structure, sa, lalo na sa lupa. Opo. Siya maganda ba lupain sa Tagaytay? Ayan. <laughs> uh, I think, like her, yeah. <laughs> yeah, kasi, oh, <laughs> ba yon? Pagka mapula ang lupa, mataba. Tama ba? <laughs> uh, hindi, not, not all. Kasi sa, sa iba, pag mapula yung lupa mo, either meron kang nickel toxicity. Mm-hmm. Which you cannot really grow much of the, ano, yung, yung stage ng, halimbawa sa palay, di ba? Uh, kalahati lang ng buhay ng palay ang abuti. Hindi siya mamumunga, hindi siya magbubunga. Kasi nickel, nickel toxicity, ano siya. Uh, may toxicity ng lupa. Although, sa, sa iba naman, okay naman yun. Kasi, iba-iba yung gulay ng lupa eh. eh ano, iba-iba. Depende sa nutrient at mineral content. Oo. Oh. So, hindi ibig sabihin na mapula. Kasi, pag nadili ko sa matatanda, o, oh, mapula yung lupa, mataba yan, di ba? Siguro nung mga panahon nila, okay pa. But, at awal, inawal tayo kasi ng marami ng quarry, marami ng mga It's not really that much na okay yan. Depende na so, Opo. Sir, kanina na pag-usapan natin, nutrition farming. Yeah. And Meraki is a farm or organic farm. Sabi natin. We are sure. Pagka ba kami nag-tour, pag ba kami nag-tour at inilibot mo kami sa iyong forest farm ito sa Meraki, ano-ano yung mga gulay na mag- makikita natin doon? At meron ba itong kasamang uh, parang learning site? Meron ba? yung pina yung yung the whole component ng Iraqi talaga kasama yung education and training. Mm-hmm. So ngayon kasi uh, several months pa lang kami nang nag-resume kami from I think September or this 
November, somewhere in November, sa akin na resume job. It's uh, almost several months pa lang. But the complete component niya kasi, merong education and training talaga kasi as we have said earlier na, we really want other people to learn also. To be like us. Or to be with us. Um, sa ngayon ang ginagawa namin, di ba may restaurant? Kung ayaw pang kumain or gusto mong kumain muna, pwede tayong mag-ikot dun sa farm. And we can, ano, we can, ano, we can tour you there para makita nyo rin kung ano ginagawa, uh, kung sabay yung farm, ano yung ginagawa sa farm, yung maging ng bahay. Para hindi ka lang nabusog sa chan, kailangan nabusog hmm. din yung isip mo. Para. Oo, hindi lang chan, hindi lang yung mata sa magandang view, pati yung yung isip, di ba? Bagong knowledge, nag-gain ka din ng new knowledge from Meraki Forest Park. Hmm, kasi para most of the children sa panahon ngayon, ano, Oh. generation na ba? We really don't know what is farming, parang gano'n. Maybe they know Farm the app. Farmville na yung alam nila. Yes, oh my gano'n. But the actual farming, even yung mga pamangin ko sa, ano, sa kalawak, hindi nila alam kung ano yung tura ng kalabaw, ng baka, ng kambing. But they know hindi growing, pero yung actual hindi nila. Ibig sabihin parang yung farming natin ngayon, hindi, hindi na alam kung isip kasi di ba pag kumakain ka dapat alam mo kung saan ang galing. And we are really strict yung gano'n natin. Meron kami mga partner farms na dapat alam namin kung ano yung standards na ginagamit na. Are we, the, are we in the same page? Diba? Are we doing the same standards? Parang gano'n. So we can do uh, yung business engagement. Parang gano'n. We are really strict on that matter. Eh. Ma'am Barbara, doon naman sa inyong farm, ano ang feedback ng inyong mga naging guests? Uh, well, they say parang magical at talagahan na pilihan accommodate. <laughs> Na-excite lang ko doon sa magical. <laughs> magical. Ano ko pa yung Disneyland magical. Hindi naman. Um, parang I feel that the goal is met. Kasi when you for you to absorb nutrients you really need to calm your nerves kasi the absorption of food is better when you calm your nerves so yung rush eating yung parang convenient eating it's really not good for us kasi uh, hindi mo na hindi mo na absorb maigi right so uh, it's in okay anyway um Na-distract lang ako, sorry. Okay. So, what happens is, sabi nila, the moment that they open the gate and they walk into with Meraki, parang, parang, parang bababa na yung kanilang, yung stress. Umalma sila, ganun. May Umalma. calming effect. Yes. So, that's why we wanted to get rid of the normal dining experience that you feel like you're entering a restaurant. We just really want you to feel you're entering a friend's home. So, kahit nga yung mga protocols, uh, ba? Of course, we need to have those protocols, right? So, we ask them to just scan stuff, right? And then send everything ahead so we're all just focused really on enjoying that moment right enjoy because the most um the most that we all must do is relishing moments right the present moment that's when we i think we get the most really satisfaction if we are really even clear of why we're there, why we, why we are with these certain people, uh, you know, those are... Pro- so, feedback-wise, uh, when it comes to food, they feel that pag kumakain ako dito, pag alis ko, parang ang linis-linis ng katawan ko. <laughs> That's why. Hmm. Um, inaantok sila after because of the wind. Kaya mm-hmm. yung na naging regulars na barbs ano sabi nila pwede ba mag-prepare ka na rin ng unan at saka <laughs> oo tapos 
paminsan, if I know that it's a family of 10, we don't accept na others kasi um, we take care of yung auditory. Yung auditory stress, yeah, atmosphere. So, you want people to really just be silenced by the wind, the birds, uh, even in the restaurants. Um, we we try to minimize the chatter of people in the kitchen. You almost don't hear them, and yet it's an open kitchen. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, ganun yung, ganun yung experience. So, where I feel just really bad is you can tell that they get stressed when they're about to leave. Parang they put on their Manila hat again because uh. they know that they're gonna encounter traffic. <laughs> So that's oh. where, oh, sa Tagaytay, so, yes. Mababa, oh, no? Ang tagal makababa, ang lapit lang. <laughs> oh, <laughs> so, traffic. Oh, so, dun sumasakit lang yung loob ko kasi parang after you've made them, after you've provided such a good stay where they feel so comfortable, right? Uh, that's why I also have to see Amy honestly. How will that change when we open the restaurant and it becomes menu based right kasi the set menu has attracted a certain set of people mm-hmm. right uh, that intend to stay there for a long time instead intend to to hug the place all to themselves that that's how it's been for these diners right so much so na tinatanong nila may ibang tao ba Mm. Right. Uh, so it now is uh, something for us to think about diba? how we can respect the same expectation uh, and yet also make it naman sustainable right that we can be we can open our doors to not a lot but you know there are so many days naman in a year but to more people at any given time. Uh, at, at an accessible uh, formula, right? Because some of them, uh, they like the core course, but we know that for others, it might be less accessible. Mm-hmm. Yun, yun lang. So, but overall, I think the experience is really they can breathe, they can walk, diba? they have time to rest, uh, they, they eat, and they, they, they feel so relaxed, right? Mm-mm. Yeah. Ma'am, yung accommodation nyo and then yung restaurant, halimbawa, nagpabook ako, ibubook ko siya for one full day yung inyong forest farm. Yung food ko is good for one full day na siya. Yes. Kung, oh, if you're gonna have the lunch and dinner, like some some team, some companies, ganun yung ginawa nila. Oh, they wanna, kasi strong yung wifi doon. So, <laughs> So they were like, there's a time this company, they just did their planning session there. So they bought the lunch and they bought the merienda and they bought the dinner. Mm. Plus, how many guests? Uh, we can accommodate now uh, up until 20 now. Oh, 20 heads? 20, 20 people comfortably. Oh, 20 bucks. Oh, 20 bucks. Oh, 20 persons. Oi, 20s, madami na rin yun na. Madami na rin tao yun. Oh, pero oh, ideally, oh. ano lang sana, ideally 16? 16. Oh, tapos ideally one is sila. Pero like I said, if one table has 10, uh, medyo hindi na ako nag-accommodate nung isa pa mm-hmm. table. Parang we close that already just for them so they can really enjoy. Opo. Uh, private talaga. Oo, uh, private talaga. Pero uh, sometimes kung, kung, kung okay naman yung iba, like there's a time we had a, an English and Filipina couple mm-hmm. that really wanted to stay for cocktails until the time that we close. So, I made them come at 3 p.m. 
Mm-hmm. She had stayed outside while a family of 16 was trying to finish. But the best I just tell we just tell them, hey, there's a by the time you arrive, there will there's a family that you're gonna cross for about an hour. Is that fine? Or do you wanna come at four o'clock mm-hmm. instead? Alam na ganon. So sinasabi lang namin, kasi we know what their objective is when they come to that. Opo. Pwede ba mag-overnight dito sa Merak- Meraki Forest Farm? Okay. Uh, Amy, kung okay sa sa'yo ngayon na nasa tent, mm. kasi wala pa kaming structure for... Okay. Yeah, for enclosed. So, uh, there have been people that really insisted that they're okay with the tent. So, Oo. Pero pumapayag kayo for the, with, ano, with the tent? Yeah, pumayag kami oh, oh, na, na, na ganon, right? But that's very rare. That's very rare that people wanted that tent. Maybe because yung gusto ng tent, kaya mag-pay ng accommodation. Kasi if they can pay naman this kind of food, kasi medyo hindi rin siya mura, no? Uh, a mm-hmm. person... For four courses, is 1,800 per person. Okay, and then 500 consumable on drinks, right? So, mm-hmm. um, so a person that tends to eat like that pro- probably is not good sleeping in a tent. Mm-hmm. Parang hindi siya may mismatch doon eh, right? Pero, they've been cases na ganun siya, na... Uh-oh. His couple, they were okay, ano, uh, mm. being in a tent. Um, even in a way, if, kasi ma'am, ano din yun eh, romantic din. <laughs> You're in a forest, tapos naka-tent, ano ba? <laughs> Ibang countries kasi, pag, yung, pag sinabi yung forest, kailang sa tent kami. Oo, diba? Yung ibang, ano, ano yung sa mga uh, okay. Europe and US side. Okay. Na ano nila. Kasi mm-hmm. kailangan talaga naka- Kwarto eh. <laughs> may kubo, oh. may ano. Hindi ba masyadong marketable yung tent? Pag ano lang kapag may disaster, tent city ka talaga. Eh, for sure, Manolo, ano po yun yung advice na mga ibibigay para po sa ating mga kasamang farmer? Uh, since talaga tayo farmer, di ba? One of the heroes in the country. We really provide uh, food mm-hmm. for the Filipinos, for the 110 million Filipinos. Every day. So, I really hope na we kailangan mag-stay tayo sa profession. Kasi farming is also a profession. Hindi mm-hmm. naman, kasi pag sinabi mong farming minsan, 3D ang tawag dyan, dangerous, dirty, mm-hmm. and difficult. Yun yung tingin nila, no? It's like a 3D. Pero, if you're really thinking that you're really providing nutrition, food for the Filipinos, it's a noble profession to do. So, I really hope that our Filipino farmers like me, uh, with, ano, we have to stay in farming. We have to pass on the farming kasi sabi mo kanina, it's 57 right now. So, we try to encourage the younger pop- the population to really yeah. join us in producing uh, good, nutritious food. And also, at the same time, protecting the environment. Kasi, of course, diba, 55 million Filipinas are involved in agriculture. So it's really a, a huge workforce that really can, ano, can satisfy, can surprise the, ano, the nutrition food requirement of the Filipinos. And we at Miraki can help you uh, please join our bandwagon in helping this country to gain uh, food security. And at the same time, uh, protecting the environment. Mom Barbs, paano po uh, invite naman natin yung ating mga kababayan to visit itong Meraki Forest Farm? Feel free to to visit uh, with Meraki Forest Farm. We have our website uh, with Meraki.co. We also have our Facebook, our Instagram. So, pwede kayong bumisita doon uh, whether you just want to do harvest and we have uh, harvest plus merienda bundle. Uh, hindi naman kailangan mag-private dining. There is a solution for just coming to the farm um, just to, we call it pick and pay. And then our pick and pay with salve snacks. Mm. Right? 
And then there's also uh, private dining that is available an available option. So dun sa mga pakiramdam at nangangailangan ng relaxation, cool air na may saysay, um, sana ma 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 consider nyo ang Bidmeraki na puntahan uh, at saka bisitahin. Yun. I hope to see you there. Yes, thank you, Mom Barbs. Thank you, Sir Manolo. Thank you. At sa ating mga kababayan, isang kaalaman na naman tungkol sa agrikultura ang ating napag-usapan. Napaganda ng ating uh, episode ngayon at sobrang inspiring nga. Salamat sa pagbabahagi ng uh, kaalaman po ng Meraki Forest Farm na how we can eat healthy, build meaningful connection, and to use products for health and wellness, no? Na ang agriculture talaga dapat nakafocus na dun sa nutrition, hindi lang po sa pagkakitaan. Kailangan po natin na maging healthy sa ating mga kinakain. Kaya nga po, maraming salamat ulit pang Barbs and Sir Manolo. Hanggang sa muli, ito po ang Agriya Kudyan. Agriya Kudyan! Agriya Kudyan!